Hello and welcome to Doubles and Trebles. I'm back on a solo mission for a final update on the 1000 Guineas that takes place at Newmarket on Sunday, the 1st of May. Thanks for tuning into the Guineas uh, coverage so far. Really pretty excited, as always, for the first classics of the season. There's plenty of other videos we've got on the, both the 2000 and 1000 Guineas on the channel, so please do check them out. Right, straight into it. 3.40 on Sunday, the 1000 Guineas, the one for Phillies. It's been a really active market um, and a changing picture uh, anti-post in comparison to the 2000 guineas that's been pretty steady with you-know-who at the top of that market. All the pieces have now fell into place. The final declarations are in. Ryan Moore, who does he ride? Tenebrism is the answer. Tenebrism has been the favourite um, since Inspiral came out about a week ago. Um, and Tenebrism was really the second favourite throughout the winter following a Cheveley Park win um, in a Group 1 at Newmarket last October. The question is, will she stay? That is the question. Aiden thinks so, and Ryan obviously thinks so as well. She's about a three to one favourite. Um, the other Aiden O'Brien runner in the field is Tuesday. Um, the one on our most recent video where I updated that um, that a few weeks ago they said wouldn't run, but apparently she's been doing pretty well um, and developed and come on since her maiden win just um, just thirty five days ago on her second start. She won a maiden, so she comes here having won nothing more than a maiden, and she's around an eleven to two shot Tuesday. Well related, as you would expect, Galileo out of Lily Langtry. Frankie Dittori does the steering on that one. The two French runners have certainly muddied the waters from my punting point of view. Um, Malavath and Zelly. Um, I don't know a lot about French racing. I don't know a lot about these two girls. Um, both look pretty talented. Um, Zelly won um, the Group 1 at Longchamp on Arc Day, um, the pre-Marcel Boussac, um, so she's obviously pretty good. Um, Malaveth um, actually uh, ran against Zelly a couple of weeks ago um, in Do Deauville over a Greek Group 3 there. That was on heavy ground, so I've not really got a clue what to make of that. Um, Malaveth was the winner that day, one and a half lengths back was Zelly. They're both turning up here. You know, they're both at single figure prices. They look at least to be involved, but to which extent, I don't know. Are they going to like the, the quicker ground um, that they're going to encounter this time round? Is, is anyone's guess, to be honest? Um, and that's why it's, you know, muddied the waters a little bit because they're unknown quantities to me um, and they could well they could well go and win. I, I don't know. We'll find out Sunday at 3.40. But uh, for the thousands that watch this channel, um, and follow every word and every bet I say, we are sitting pretty pretty on discoveries. 12 to 1 on Doubles and Trebles Twitter about three weeks ago, 10 to 1 on Doubles and Trebles YouTube about two and a half weeks ago. She's now 5 to 1 best price discoveries. There's no further action required from a betting perspective. We're sitting pretty pretty. Um, but I would happily back discoveries now again at 5 to 1. Um, the It's good to firm is in the description currently. There is a bit of... Um, there is a bit of rain and, and um, forecast for Sunday at Newmarket. Hopefully, it's not too much. The faster, the better for discoveries, as we've already mentioned. I think she's got the best form in the book. She's a Group 1 winner. Um, she won a Group 2 last year. Then she won a Group 1. Uh, so she, she was third in a Group 2. Then she won a Group 1. I think she's got the best form in the book. Um, she definitely will stay a mile. We can't say the same about Tenor Bridgham, who might stay a mile, but we're not sure. Um, like I say, there's no action required from me. There will be no further action from me from a betting perspective. But if you are brand new to the channel and you've never seen any of our videos, I would still advise Discoveries right now at 5 to 1. Just be careful about that rain. Elsewhere on the card at Newmarket, it didn't look that great to me, a punting card. Um, it's a much better card on the Saturday for, for people like me. Um, but yeah, the Pretty Poly Stakes 225 um, is an Oaks trial um, over 10 furlongs for the ladies. Um, it's quite simple here. There's a horse called Cronell. Um, who beat a horse called Fontaine or Fontaine by a neck last time. And then there's a horse whose name I'm almost certain to get wrong because it's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, Perry Pathetic beat a horse also called Fontaine. The same horse by half a length last time. So a neck and half a length, pretty similar. Nothing groundbreaking there in two different races. Cronell is five to two and Perry, Perry Pathetic is six to one. Six to one will do me. I think there's a bit of a bias in the market there because Perry Patatic hasn't been seen since October, whereas Cronell um, was out a couple of weeks ago at the Craven meeting, beating Fontaine by a neck. Um, so I think that's the bet for me to, for me there. There's a lot of unknowns. I think the second favourite, the Godolphin horse uh, with the moonlight, not sure. Is she going to stay? Not sure. The similar questions could be asked about Cronell. She probably will, but a breeding doesn't suggest that a step up to 10 furlongs um, is perfect for her, but Cronell, I must admit, 
visually in the last run over a mile at Newmarket, she looked like a step up would be fine. But breeding maybe suggests differently. Um, yeah, so that's the bet there. Um, Perry Pathetic is six to one. That will be the second bet. Um, like I say, I didn't think much of the card on at Newmarket on Sunday, to be honest. So for the third and final bet, we go to Salisbury for the 502. A maiden stakes at Salisbury. Um, it's a long way down from the group one, uh, 1,000 guineas, but someone's got to win. Um, I thought a horse called Ring Fenced ran a lovely debut at Newbury just a couple of weeks ago. She was less than a length behind Susie's shoes that day, who I think is a decent enough yardstick at that level. My notebook at the time reads, winner waiting to happen. And I think that is the case. She shaped as if a step up in trip would be to her liking. That's what she's going to get here. The debut is at 10 furlongs. This is over a mile and a half. I think that will be ideal. Just the four runners in this, and there's no prices yet. It's a maiden that's over 48 hours away at Salisbury. Um, at the race's tissue shows three to one ring fence. I would be happy with that. Um, that would be nice. Um, but I'll put it down in the comments as, a, as an SP win bet because there's there's one in there called um, Chairman for Martin Mead that looks set to be favourite according to the tissue, but I've not got a clue what price they will be. But if we can get three to one ring fence, I'll be happy with that. Six to one, Perry Pathetic at Newmarket in the 225, I'll be happy with that. I'm already happy with Discoveries, 12 to one as advised and 10 to one as advised. But if you start in a fresh, I would still back Discoveries at five to one if I was starting a fresh right now and that's what i think you should do as well so thanks for watching um no doubt there'll be some reaction to the guineas and the three-day new market meeting next week um, and we'll also start looking towards the derby as well and pie man will be back cheers